Let me cut to it, if I may. In Sturgis, Michigan, it is $2.89 a gallon. I guess that's better than in California. What is the grand home plan to increase oil production in America? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that is hilarious. Would that I had the magic wand on this. As you know, of course, uh, oil is a global market. It is controlled by a cartel. That cartel is called OPEC, and they made a decision yesterday that they were not going to increase beyond what they were already planning. So, uh, you know, the, uh, the interesting thing is, you know, the Department of Energy has an energy information agency, and that agency does the forecasting of what oil and gas prices are going to be. As of, uh, as of right now, their forecast for the beginning of December is that on average gas prices, gasoline prices, will be about $3.05 at the beginning of December. They're, they will do an adjustment to that forecast in the next week or so, so we'll see if that holds. Mm -hmm. But um, clearly, the Biden administration is very concerned about the price at the pump and certainly the price in people's wallets for natural gas as well for this winter, including, I would say, propane and heating oil, particularly right. in the Northeast. What is the American solution? If they're the bad guys rushing in OPEC at the global price of the market, we all understand the economics. What is the Biden plan to jumpstart energy production across America? Well, Here's the Biden plan. I'm here at Glasgow. The Biden plan is to diversify and to make sure that we move in a direction of clean energy where we're not reliant upon cartels and we're not reliant upon geopolitical adversaries who may be um, creating choke points for our mm -hmm. ability and our people to be able to access energy. So that's obviously a longer term strategy and we will continue. This is why this is called a transition. Right. But if 80 plus dollars a barrel doesn't incentivize um, oil companies mm -hmm. to get off the sidelines, I'm not sure what will. For those of you on radio today and John Farrell, I must note that the former governor of Michigan is wearing East Lansing green today. That's what the color. How reliant <laughs> are we on OPEC Plus? I do wonder and I don't think it's funny. Senator Manchin had this to say earlier this week. Let's take a listen. I say that we can basically do more for ourselves. We've been energy independent for the first time in 67 years. Why can't we do more? Why can't we produce more? We've got plenty of natural gas. My state, beautiful state of West Virginia, has an ocean of natural gas under it. If they just let us build a pipeline, we could get the product to market. And why don't we do more drilling and why don't we do more, basically, production in the United States? I'm not depending on OPEC. I'm not depending on other countries for my energy anymore. We know how to do it. We have the technology. We should be relying on ourselves. The words of the senator, the Democrat. Mr. Manchin there. These are the words of the pioneer CEO. Yeah, Madam Secretary, let's pick up with the words of the pioneer CEO. The president's efforts to restrict drilling on federal land and offshore have been starting to backfire some. His quote, he's got to back off his rhetoric on federal leases going forward. Do you think it's true that we are reliant on OPEC plus in the United States of America? We are reliant on a global gas market. I mean, the global gas market, we can't just produce oil for the United States. It is on a global market. And let me just say, the president has not banned oil and gas leases. There are... 23 million acres of public lands, that includes offshore and onshore, where there are leases that, have, that are not being used right now by oil and gas companies. Over 7,000 leases have been issued, and the oil and gas companies are not using them. They're sitting on them. They're stockpiling these leases. Why is that? So we need, you know, if the production issue is not at the foot of the president. There is not a ban on oil and gas leases on federal lands Madam today. Secretary, you know I'm careful with my words. I didn't say ban, I said restrict. And in addition to that, you're talking about why they won't invest. No we know today. why they won't invest. We, they won't invest because this administration is speaking so highly of this big energy transition that you are actively supporting. So I think it's misleading to say that we are in the United States of America increasingly dependent on OPEC plus when we've seen oil production in this country increase over the last several decades. Now, there are some options out there for you, as you know, with the SPR. With the options on the table to address the situation we're in at the moment, the United States of America is in control of its own destiny here. I do wonder if the SPR is an option for you to address what's happening in the commodity market. 
The SPR is certainly on the table as a, an option, and the president will have more to say about that. But let us be clear. I mean, just to go back to your other point, I mean, these, the oil and gas companies have leases that there is no slowdown, uh, there is no, uh, whatever the words were that you use, there's no restriction, none ever on their ability to use those leases. Over 7,000 of them on public lands right now. So I just don't want to let that stand. It is not the president's doing that is causing the oil and gas companies right now to decide to slow down. Actually, they were slowed down because of COVID, and we're seeing some movement of oil rigs getting back online, but it's, it is curious about why they are not incentivized more at $80 a barrel. Let me just say, and you're right about us moving to uh, clean energy. That is the future, and that is the long-term strategy, and we must do that so that we're not reliant upon fuels that pollute the air that we see that are accelerating climate change. To that point, Secretary Granholm, some people say that the best cure to get to a greener future faster is to allow gas prices to go higher. They are much higher in places like the United Kingdom. Why isn't there a school of thought saying, this is just fine, perhaps people will reduce their reliance on fossil fuels and diversify more quickly? Because real people use fossil fuels and real people's wallets, uh, livelihoods are at stake. The president does not want to see the price of fuel hurt and pinch real people. Poor communities have about up to 30 percent of their monthly income is based upon fuels. It's not right to raise the price of fuels that would actually hurt real people. That is not in the president's plan and he doesn't want to see that. Madam Secretary, when can we expect a decision with the SPR? Is that something you're thinking about imminently? Um, I know that the president is looking at it and he'll have more to say about it.